He's a sister lady that brought him here. This is my friend Danny. And uh, he's going to testify and tell you what God done in his life uh, here two weeks ago on a Sunday. This morning, that there's some folks in here you'd like to have the Holy Ghost. You'd like to receive the Holy Ghost. And and when you pray to receive the Holy Ghost, you don't pray to speak in tongues. That's not how it works. But when you receive the gift of the Holy Ghost, you will speak in other tongues. Just like they did in the Bible. Amen? Amen. Now, I know we got some folks that, that struggle with that a little bit, but if you'd like to have a Bible study, you just let me know at the church. And, Myself and one of the team will because I believe with all my heart that every word, word in that book is true. And then Danny shows up and honestly, he didn't tell you all some of the testimony about his history, where he was raised at, and he knew. That's the second time Danny told me and somebody else told me. They went to a different kind of church for years. Didn't like it. Didn't feel nothing. Never grew, but it's just what you do. I'm happy to tell you, going to church is not something we do. It's who we are. Right. And Sister Maria said it this morning. It is not just I got my church life and then I got my me life. I've got my God life, and that's all there is. And a part of my God life is I come into his gates with thanksgiving and into his courts with praise. And there, I'm healed, I'm delivered, I'm blessed, I'm edified, I'm encouraged. And if you need to be filled with the baptism of the Holy Ghost, you sure can. Book of Jude is where we are today, no text necessarily. The beginning of the book of Jude begins with the writer giving the purpose of the letter, which is to exhort the believers to hold on while under a 
attack, or as the writer said, to earnestly contend for the faith. He said, I, I, I wanted to exhort you. I wanted to encourage you. I wanted to write you a letter. I gave all diligence about what should I write. And he said, but the present danger calls for contention. The danger that is against you calls for contention. I'm just going to just interject this. It's not in my nose now, but I'm going to interject it. The world would make you think as a believer, that everybody is against you. That is a lie. There are hundreds, nay, thousands of men and women that go to bed every night hungry for what you have. There are men and women all over this nation, yet all over the world, who come looking for something that's real, something that's just beyond regular religion, something that's just beyond going through the motions, uh, something that's just beyond hype and, and getting everybody up. But, but there is a need for contention. But we're not in the losing business. We're in the winning business. Right. Uh, and the Word of God says you've got to earnestly contend for the faith. The faith refers to the entire body of beliefs. Thank you, Brother Blake. The faith refers, when he said earnestly contend for the faith, it's not just believing, but it's the entire body of beliefs that make up the truth. Your faith, it's the very fiber of who we are, of what we know, of who we will become, and where we're going. It rests upon our ability to contend and win for the faith. Jude says they have attacked you and the battle is on. They've even been embedded in the army of God. I'm kind of scared to say that because we're supposed to preach about us and them. But some of us is like them. And some of them wishes they was like us. But the word of the Lord comes today to sound the trumpet, if you will, in the valley of decision and to call this body of believers to make up your mind, Sister Maria, whether you're going to be all in are going to be all out. But there will come a time when you have to make that decision. There are people that have crept in, the writer says, designated for the express purpose of being tools for our destruction. They are influential and they are manipulative. They are loud and they are brash. And their main goal is to draw you away from the truth, the body of faith. They operate in their spirit, fueled by rebellion and jealousy, the desire for personal gain. And I'm all in the word. I'm just paraphrasing it for time's sake. They are especially noted for their rebellion against God-ordained leadership. The writer calls them clouds that give no rain or someone whose only purpose is to put a shadow over the, between you and the light. He said they're like trees, twice dead, meaning they were planted but unfruitful, and now they've been pulled up by the roots. The imagery cannot be lost that these people have lost their purpose first and now have lost their connection to God and their own mission to destroy believers and bring them away from the faith. They are murmurers and complainers. And they live only to satisfy their own desires. They elevate themselves and they use flattery for manipulation. And then comes the first but. You see, the word but is a conjunction. And it ties two contrasting ideas together. And right after this but comes a declaration of an alternative to the deceivers, the manipulators, the ungodly, the unholy. When he says in verse 17, but, beloved, remember, remember ye the words which were spoken before of the apostles of our Lord Jesus Christ. You gotta remember, you can't be deceived by this, you can't be distracted by this, but you gotta remember God told you there was a movement coming to try to draw you away from truth. 
They told us that there would come in the last days mockers. That word mockers would be translated scoffers in modern English terminology. And it is a word used only by religious writers referring to attack against believers, against their faith, and against their stand that they've taken for God. These mockers only exist as observers of the kingdom of God. They live according to their own ungodly desires. They will bring division. They foster constantly an us against them mentality. Fostering and encouraging disunity based upon their wants. Led by their own feelings and ideas. Caught up in a maelstrom of stubbornness and self-worship. And there's no evidence of the spirit of God in their lives. Y'all know by now that I don't believe looking like you're apostolic, looking like you're Pentecostal, doesn't mean you are. He said, I want you to remember. We got to remember, 2 Peter tells us, Jews, they go hand in hand. I want you to remember, there are people, not devils, not demons, there are people that are in your life. For the express purpose of pulling you away from God. The only reason they're there, trust me. Come on. Lord, I'd really like to preach something else. But you need to hear what thus says the word of the Lord. Because there comes the second but. First but is I want you to remember you shouldn't be surprised. We we Oh, Lord, we struggle right now. We struggle with believing that everybody is okay and that everybody is right. And, and Sister Miss Jane uses the illustration of, of all sitting around in a circle and, and sing to my God. And you'd be right with your way and I'll be right with my way and we'll just all be right together. But hear me when I tell you, the Lord very clearly said, when I come back, there are going to be people coming going to make an argument for themselves. They're going to say, I did this, and I did this, and I did this in your name. And he's going to say, I didn't ever know you. We cannot afford to be deceived. And we certainly cannot bow down with the masses at the altar of what pleases me is right. And what makes me happy is right. But I am enlisted as a soldier in the army of the Lord. Bible for you and pray the will of God for you. 
If you're going to get on this and you're going to get a part of this, you're going to have to decide you're going to do it. Yeah. And you're going to begin to work. And you're going to begin to pray. And you're going to begin to fast. And you're going to begin to read the Word of God. But ye, beloved, building up yourselves on your most holy faith. We, we talked about it. I don't know how good I'm doing, but I feel good. He's fine. But ye, beloved, it's something different. But it's a different. It's not the same as the others. If you're not going to fall prey. You're not going to be deceived. You're not going to be manipulated. And here's how. Building up yourselves on your most holy faith. I looked that word up, Brother Larry. Most holy. And you know what it means? Different. You've got a total realization the Bible very clearly says that he has dealt to every man the measure of faith. Everybody's got enough faith to come out of the darkness to the light. But everybody has not nurtured their faith and has not doctored their faith and has not dug down and fertilized their faith where it begins to grow into something different. But ye, beloved, building up yourselves on your most holy faith, praying, you ready for this, Daddy? Praying in the Holy Ghost. There's a stronger faith that the Spirit is calling you to build yourself up on. A stronger faith, a faith like the disciples, a faith that is not built upon perfection, but on total dependence on God. The word building up yourselves. This is what it means. Definition. Following a plan with pre-designed specifications. You know what it means? It means when I'm building up myself on my most holy faith, I'm working with the Lord on me. Yeah. Yeah. It acknowledges and embraces that this life I live doesn't belong to me. I said this Wednesday night. I'm a little nervous and I don't know why, but it ticks me off. I said this Wednesday night, God's got a plan, God's got a purpose. This life you live, it ain't yours. You didn't decide to be born. You didn't decide to be born of whichever mom and daddy got you born. You didn't decide to be born and live in southeast Missouri. You didn't decide to come into this world. You came because God brought you into this world. And he brought you into this world with purpose. And the first thing you have to acknowledge in winning this battle is I don't belong to you. I'm not mine. I'm not my own boss. I belong to him. I belong to him. I'm living in the plan and purpose of God. And it's a plan and purpose he had from the beginning. Listen to me, honey. He, he don't wait till you show up here and then decide, what am I going to do with Kevin after that? When he shows up here, he says, I've been waiting on you. I've been waiting for the plan. See, here I've got a plan for you. I've got a purpose for you. And the reason why some of us are really, really struggling in our relationship with God is we're scared to death of that purpose he has for us. Now, ain't none of this my sermon yet. None of this my sermon. This is just my introduction. Building up yourselves on your most holy faith, praying in the Holy Ghost. That's praying in the Spirit. According to the will of the Spirit, me in the Spirit and the Spirit in me. The plan of success has been laid out and I'm living it. They all you think you're bragging. No, 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 I'm not bragging. But I'm living the plan of God. And sometimes I live it good. And Brother Jerry, sometimes I don't do so hot. But now one time when I did not do so hot, the Lord did not wind up his plan and throw it in the trash. But he said, this is what I died for. This is what I gave my life for. This is what I gave my life for. To not only 
only surviving, but thriving and prospering in this. Verse 21. This is the title of my sermon. Keep yourselves in the will of God. But ye, beloved, building up yourselves in your most holy faith, praying in the Holy Ghost, keep yourselves in the love of God, looking for the mercy of our Lord Jesus Christ for the eternal life. Now hear me when I tell you. Hang with me. Hang with me. I know people are going to go to the bathroom, and it's important. It's very important. They need your attention. The love of God doesn't change. Now, I have preached to this church and called to this church, and I will again. He will not start loving you more when you start being good. He loves you as much as he's ever going to love you right now. He is not going to say, when you start giving, I love you more. When you start going to church, I love you more. And when you start being good, I love you more. That's a lie the devil tells you. Because the truth is, we will never be good enough to deserve the love of God. And there's victory and liberty in all of that. The love of God is unimpeachable. It's unchangeable and unaffected by anything life throws at us. From our adversary, the devil, or any of his imps, or any human misfortune. Nothing that humanity or the spirit world know anything about affects the love of God. Nothing. Brother Larry, he loved you just as much on the bar stool as he did on the platform. Now, I'm struggling right now because some of us don't believe that. But they're going to have to get up early to prove to you that he didn't love you just as much then. And I'm going to tell you something. When he loved you on the bar stool, it felt more powerful than anything you ever felt on the platform. Because you knew you didn't deserve it. Because when you get up here and all talented and you sing and play, you finally start thinking, you know what? When you come into church and you know you really don't even deserve to get to come. Yeah. They hit the one note on the piano. And it could be in the key of W, X, Y, or Z. But you feel the Holy Ghost in you. But it don't drive, Sister Stephanie, of what I thought. I thought I had to come and I had to give a little bit of offering and I had to clap for 37 and a half times with the first song and raise my hand finally with the, for 10 seconds with the second song and, and then drop four hallelujahs and six praise the Lord. And finally, the Lord, no, no, I show up here messed up. I show up here making wrong. I show up here with blood on me, with God's on me. I show up here with all
love of God that nothing affects it. That's why Paul said, For I am persuaded that neither death, nor light, nor angels, nor principalities, nor powers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor height, nor death, nor any other creature shall be able. You know what that means? Shall be able? You know what it means? It means that's what they're trying to do. Brother David, that means everything tells me that you had one purpose, separate you from the love of God. Everything you struggle, the devil wants you to think God don't love you no more. And then he'll tell you, you're not good enough to be loved. Huh? Can I get a witness? Yeah. Oh, come on, you got to know. I got people that the love of God invaded the prison and invaded the jail and invaded the day you've ever lived, the lowest you've ever been, the ugliest, the meanest, the foulest, the funkiest that you've ever been, he loves you there. Because the book says, but God commended his love toward us in that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. The greatest manifestation of love that any man could know is when somebody gives their life for you and Jesus did it for all of us. And he did it because he so loved the world. He blessed me when everybody else thought I was done. He gave me the greatest of gifts when I had nothing to give him. He loved me when I was unlovable. It is that love that gives me hope, strength, help, and salvation. It is that love that keeps me in line. And when I mess up, it's that love that brings me back. If he is that good, if he is that faithful, holy, pure, righteous, mindful of us, etc., if he loves us that much, then why does the writer in Jude Warned to earnestly contend for the faith. Why couldn't he have just said, Call him up, call him up, tell him what you want, call him up, call him up, tell him what you want? Why couldn't he have just said, For the Lord is good and his mercy is everlasting? 
His truth endures from all generations. He said, I sought the Lord and asked him, what should I write you? And he said, you should earnestly contend for the faith. And what's that got to do with anything? I don't know, Brother Derek. How many times did you say over the last year and a half, the devil and the flesh said, this ain't worth it? I, I've given about probably a dozen last week. Well, that's his, that's his strategy. He wants to get me away from the love of God. And the enemy's coming after us. So how is it, why is it that a God, we read it in the bread. Has anybody read in the bread and saw how stupid the children of Israel were and scratched their head? <laughs> and they all got to the bed. Somebody give her a dime. <laughs> star, she wants a star, I'm sorry. How is it? He ain't never done nobody in here wrong. Man, I've sold up here stupid, y'all. I have sold up here. I have criticized everybody that got on the platform. I have dogged out everybody who dared to worship when I know what they've been doing. And now, when y'all do it, you put it on Facebook so everybody knows. How is it that somebody that loves us that much is that good and that faithful and that kind? Why would they have to tell us, better be careful or somebody's going to come and steal away what you have? Why is that? It was, I think it was in, uh, it was in uh, on being a servant of God last week or the week before. Who wouldn't want to serve a God like God? And he said, He says, they're coming after you. And you've got to beware. And you're going to have to build up yourself on your most holy faith, pray in the Holy Ghost, and keep yourself in the love of God. So that means the love of God won't keep me in the love of God. I've got to go to keep myself in the love of God. Here's where this comes from. Matthew 24, 12. And I, I, I really, right now, is when I want to say I'm hurrying, but that'd be a lie. So I can't say it. But I'll get done as quick as I can. That's all I promise you. If you got to go, hope you got your keys with you. You know where the door is going. And because iniquity shall abound, the love of many shall wax cold. Wait a second. You mean the iniquity of the world affects the love of the church? Looks like it does. You see, here's what iniquity is. Lawlessness, which means everybody just does that which is right to them. He says, iniquity does abound. And I looked that word up, Sister Kelly. I'm not sure to love you. You've been incredibly talented in your gifts, but I miss my woman bad. <laughs> I miss her. She's supposed to be sitting over there, too. And then when he does a bow, we hang with me a few minutes here? I looked it up, and you know what it means? Fill up all capacity. That means. It is as bad as it possibly can be. And because iniquity shall abound, in all the ungodliness and the immorality, every empty place where the evil can go is taken over. And because lawlessness shall That's why the devil wants you to think that he wins. And you measure the devil's level of power, what you see in people. Yeah. Yeah. Uh -huh. How do you know the devil's doing bad? Because you see people doing bad. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Okay. He said, 
because iniquity doth abound, the love of many. I look that up. And there's an article that's missing. One word article that's missing in the trans translation. It should not be the love of many, but the love of the many. Did you read that too? somebody that ain't out there living like them. And you know what's happened when I do that, Brother Jerry? I forgot. I forgot why I'm here in the first place. I'm coming to the fold. Give me a little bit. Just give me a <laughs> Our minds become convoluted and distracted. And we feel like it's our responsibility to fight against the lawlessness and in doing so, we fell prey to a new truth that exists only in our minds. You're like this, Dave. Everybody's bad. Nobody can be trusted. And anarchy reigns. I looked up anarchy. It's a state of disorder that reigns due to the absence of or non-recognition of authority. Jude said, it was needful for me to write to you that you should earnestly contend for the faith. And his concluding march in return, earnestly contending for the faith and build up yourselves on your most holy faith, praying in the Holy Ghost, and thereby keep yourselves in the love of God. I'm about to cause trouble, but it's okay. I have before. Besides, y'all ain't been rocking the boat too much the last few days. Y'all need something to talk about. <laughs> Staying in the love of God is my defense. Because if I'm in the love of God, 
and they come and spray crazy words on the front door of the church. It ain't going to hurt my feelings, Brother Chris. Why? Because the love of God says I got to love them. And even when I don't feel like it, Brother Cody, I'm going to stay in the love of God and do it because that's what he said to me. You say, well, what about if I don't feel it? You ain't got to feel it to obey it. And he said, if you love me, you'll keep my commandments. How many stupid things have you done for that little senorita that you love so much? Think about when you first fall in love. Three o'clock in the morning. Will you go get me a quarter pound double stack of cheese and wings? How fast can I get ready? I love it. I'll do anything for it. You remember that whole day? See, when I love him, I want to do what he says. And when you love them, you keep doing what they say, even if you don't want to. Because we found out love is not a feeling anyway, it's a decision. I know we don't believe that. I know some of y'all don't believe that. I know. And then when they start playing it, that certain song and you just want to cry, get your tooth bump, that's love. You wish. Love is when they roll over in the morning and their breath can feel pain off the wall and you get goosebumps in your belly butterflies because you love them so much. <laughs> you see, sometimes, Brother Terrence, I come to church and everybody's shouting and everybody's dancing. Well, something must be wrong with me because I don't feel that. Let me tell you what I feel like happening. The Lord has put me on the love meter. And he's trying to find out if I'll still love him when I don't feel him. He's trying to find out, will I still worship him even though I ain't jiving with the song they're singing? He's trying to find out, even though I've got the hiccups, if I can still clap my hands. Because, you know what? I don't love him for what he does for me. I love him for what he did for me. Oh, God. And what he did is he gave me a chance. says, Sister Ashley, Brother Gavin, he said, if you love me, you do what I say. But I don't feel like doing what he says. I don't feel like doing it if you don't love me. Oh, but I think I do. Yeah, you love him when you need him. You love him when he's got something for you. You love him when you feel him. But do you love him because of who he is? Come to the music. I ain't near about done, but I'm gonna quit. But I know I can read the writing on the wall. First John 2 and 15 says, Love not the world, 
these are the things that are in the world. If any man loves the world, the love of the Father is not in him. For all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eye, and the pride of life is not of the Father, but is of the world. And the world passes away. You can't stay in something that ain't always going to be here. The world passes away. But he that doeth the will of God abideth forever. How is that? Because when you do the will of God, you're in the love of God. And the love of God doesn't change. The love of God is forever. The only chapter of Revelation. The Lord speaks to John and he tells him, I want you to write letters to seven churches. The first letter you're going to write is to the church at Ephesus. It was a church that knew how to do everything right. They worked hard, they exhibited patience, they struggled against evil, promoting and declaring holiness and purity. They carried the burden, they stood strong, they had not quit. They persevered. He said, nevertheless, I've got something against you. said I'm rooted and grounded in his love but he wants me to know his love <clears throat> so that means there's this church been here 93 years we've heard messages out of every book in the Bible we know how to how to pray at the right time and worship at the right time we know how to do everything the right way but Sister Maria if I'm rooted but there's more of his love for me. Here we go. Which passeth knowledge. Remember I taught you all this. You ain't going to find it in a book. Not even in the Bible. You're not going to find it by reading and applying your natural wit and wisdom to it. She might be filled with all the fullness of God. That's Ephesians 3.19. That's a letter written to the same church in Revelation chapter 2. He said, you got everything right, but you got a love problem. He said, you were never supposed to just stay at the foundational love. And you know why we fight against wicked people? don't know how to love them like Jesus loved them. And we somehow take it personal when they do things that violate the law of God. Verse John 4, 16 through 19 as you stand. And we have known and believed the love that God had to us. God is love, and he that dwelleth in love dwelleth in God. He that stays in love stays in God, and God in him. To keep yourself, stay in the love of God. You ain't got to have everything right all the time. You ain't got to know, I, I was telling somebody about baptizing. You, you, you get a good understanding of what baptism is, we're going to baptize you. 
And you may not yet know about the seven churches of Revelation. And you may not be able to tell if we're going through the tribulation or not. Or when the mark of the beast is coming. And who's going to give the mark of the beast. And, and what the pale horse and the green horse and the black horse and the red horse. But you've got to understand it enough to be baptized. stay in the love of God. He keeps his end of that. His love stays the same. It's solid. The variable is me. And the way I prove that I'm in his love is I do what he says. <coughs> so I read it in Mr. Wiersbe's book. He said, why do you call me Lord and Lord and you don't do what I say? Well, I don't think I have to. Surprise! That's why you will be fighting against all these wicked people. The Lord puts you in the world to reach them. And how are you going to reach them if you hate them? And we have known and believed. I've got to go. i got to go. And we have known and believed the love that God has to us. God is love. He that dwelleth in love dwelleth in God and God in him. Herein, where? In God, me and God, and him and me. I don't have time to teach this, but it's true. I get in God in baptism. He gets in me through the filling and filling of the Holy Ghost. Herein is our love made perfect. Look at here. That we may have boldness in the day of judgment. Because as he is, so are we in this world. And here's the thing. There is no fear in love. The perfect love casteth out fear. The reason why we hate them is because we're afraid of them. Because it looks like they're winning. Huh? The country of Brazil is predominantly run by a particular national world religion. They have called a special council. They called a special council to launch missionaries into Brazil. They called a 911 at their headquarters because the Pentecostals are taking over the whole country. You're not going to see that on CNN. You're not going to see it on Fox. You're not going to see it on the news. You're not going to see that, that, that there are churches all over showing up at service and bringing their whole congregation to be baptized in Jesus' name. Oh, yeah. I, got, I got a notice yesterday of a man that going to baptize 152 people in Jesus' name, whole church, whole congregation. <laughs> the news is going to tell you that the iniquity is win. Yeah. Don't get in the world. Because your love is going to grow cold. Stay in the love of God. You know what the love of God believes? I, I got to quit. I'm going to quit, but I want to keep on preaching because I like it. You know what the love of God says? The love of God said, I'm going to love that knucklehead, even though he's done nothing worth love. And you know what? How, you want to know why I'm going to love him that way? Because that's how Jesus did. There is no fear in love. You're afraid of them. But perfect love casteth out fear. Because fear hath torment. He that feareth is not made perfect in love. He loved him. Because he first loved him. If you're here today, you're struggling. I know one of you are. I hope one of you are. You didn't hardly worship today. You didn't respond much today. You fight your tail, you fight your mind, you fight yourself. Young lady, I want you to respond today and to move back into the love of God. Say, well, I don't have it all together. You didn't have it all together when he loved you the first time. Well, I've got this going on. I've got that going on. I'm doing this and I'm doing that. You were doing that and he loved you anyway. Well, will you respond to the love of God? Will you respond to the love of God? 
We used to sing it, Sister Nadine. They're not going to sing it today because they probably don't know it. But I've been thinking it ever since I started to preach this. I love him too much to fail him now. I love him too much to break my vow. Because I promised the Lord, Brother Shannon, that I was going to make it somehow. And I love him too much. I know the Lord is working in this house. I know I've preached a long time. I, I know, I know, good Lord, I know. But when you move back into the love of God, you don't want to be no wrong on the town that the gossip is tearing everybody down. You don't want to be the one to know and to tell that you want something told again. It don't feel good and clean to criticize everything and everybody. Move back into the love of God. Devil's not going to know what to do with you when you walk out of here today. Somebody does you wrong, says something wrong to you, throws a rock at you, spits on your windshield. And you say, bless you, Lord. I think that's crazy, Brother Terrence. I think that's what Jesus does. Yeah. Yeah. We've been fighting a whole bunch of battles that don't mean nothing. Brother Shannon, there's a whole world lined up out there saying, will you help me? Yeah. And you say, I'm going to get to you, but first I'm going to get this guy. Yeah. First I'm going to get this guy. I'm going to get this guy. I'm going to get it. We're going to fight against it. Yeah. We're going to fight against flesh and blood. Yeah. The way we fight is in the world. Will you come keep yourself in the love of God? This altar's open. You can pray where you're at. Turn around and kneel at your pew. God's got you. He loves you. Believe in it. Let's go.
tonight, youth convention is March the 27th through 29th. Brother Richard needs to know today who is planning to go. This Wednesday evening, we will have brother and sister Zenobia, missionaries to Spain. And then Southeast Regional Camp Meeting this week, March the 7th and 8th, is at the Black River Coliseum in Poplar Bluff, Missouri. I do encourage whoever uh, is able to go to that to go. It is incredible. Daylight savings time is uh, service is next Sunday, March the 10th at 2 p.m. There will be no classes that day, only church. And then baby shower for Sister Meredith Edwards is Saturday, March the 9th at 2 p.m. here at the church. RSVP to Sister Sophia at 573-620-7014 by March the 1st and registered at baby list. The annual business meeting is Wednesday, March the 13th at 6 p.m. And then the Just for Youth rally is Friday, March the 15th at 7.30 p.m. at the Sanctuary in Sykeston, Pastor Teague's Church. The aftershock is at the YMCA and $10 each. Please bring cash to pay at the door. And then the rescheduled work day is Saturday, March the 16th at 9 a.m., weather permitting. Ladies' Conference is April the 25th through the 27th at the Chateau on the Lake in Branson, Missouri. Registration is $70. After April 8th, it's 90. The QR code is below to register here on the bulletin. And then anyone interested in helping with food for the sick, please see Sister Judy. And that's all the announcements I've got today. Do I have any birthdays or anniversaries? Thank you. 